Hello, it's Scott Manley here. As you can see, I am still unpacking. This is my temporary studio. I've been very busy this weekend, which is why I haven't got around to talking about the biggest story that I've been asked about. An incident in Russia which supposedly involved a propulsion system and released nuclear uh, radiation, nuclear material, which was first detected on Thursday by a city-based you know, radiation sensing system. They issued an alert uh, about elevated background radiation levels. They weren't particularly high and they did fall off back to normal after about half an hour. That being said, people in the city did go and buy a bunch of iodine tablets you know, to protect themselves against radioactive iodine. Uh, that report actually was later scrubbed from that website, but it has been archived. The first official confirmation came, I believe, from the Russian Defense Ministry, who talked about individuals being killed during the test of a liquid propulsion system and an isotope source. And then Rosatom confirmed that five of their people had been killed in an incident. They talked about the radiation levels without going into any detail at all. We don't know what was released. Uh, we also have some photos from social media showing ambulances being checked by uh, individuals wearing decontamination radiation suits. So not a lot of information to go on and truthfully I'm having a problem with parsing this because they talk about a jet and they talk about a liquid propulsion system, they talk about an isotope power source, presumably isotope means nuclear reactor because I don't think a radioisotope thermoelectric generator would make any sense. Uh, but if you're building, the, supposedly, right, we, and, and actually it's pretty, com pretty common knowledge at this point, that Russia is interested in building a nuclear-powered cruise missile. And I believe the code name for this is, um, it's, I know it's in the West, it's called the SSX-9 Skyfall, which is awesome. But the, I can't remember the Russian name. Anyway... <laughs> This is a, some, something similar to Project Pluto, where you have a nuclear reactor and the, you have an air intake, and when it's going fast enough, the air gets pushed through this, it gets heated, and you get a ramjet effect. And that doesn't need a liquid propulsion system. The whole point is it's running off of air. A nuclear rocket, right, like Nerva, that does have a liquid propulsion system, so that would make sense. Um, now, I have a theory, and again, this comes down to the vagaries of translation. I think that it's possible that this could actually be the coolant for the reactor. And because, because we've seen compact Russian nuclear reactors used on their RORSATs, which used sodium potassium coolant. And if that stuff leaked, then you're in the sea, there's water, there's hydrogen, there's fire, possibly explosions, and then there's small amounts of radiation release. That's my theory. Another theory is that to get this rocket, this cruise missile up to speed, you would need a propulsion system, a conventional propulsion system, and that could be a liquid rocket. But everything we've seen suggests that it is a solid rocket motor. That being said, I'm not the person that's looking at this all the time in my daily job. So. Yeah, this is absolutely fascinating. There is circumstantial evidence that this is the same nuclear cruise missile. Back in 2017, there was supposedly a test of this, which ended with the missile landing in the ocean. There were, it was relatively close to international airspace and there were American and international aircraft observing this, looking for radiation signatures. A ship came along, the Sarabianka, which is a service ship for Russia's fleet of nuclear-powered icebreakers. And it supposedly takes, you know, radioactive waste and ships it around and, re and takes it to reprocessing plants. So it would be ideal if you were to pick a nuclear reactor from a missile off the bottom of the ocean and take it away safely. This same ship turned up in this new test location. It's believed that because this original test location was too close to international airspace, they moved it deep down into this area of northern Russia. It's down a valley, down a, well, down an inlet, so the international airspace is a fair distance away. And that area has been close to commercial shipping. Also, in uh, following the incident, the area has been close to fishing and swimming because people living up in the Arctic Circle are clearly badasses that like to go swimming. Uh, <laughs> awesome. No, I love you guys, seriously. 
So look, that's been on site. That would strongly indicate that it's highly likely these things are related. So how does a nuclear, uh, how would this work? Well, it would be a missile that could fly around for weeks at a time and then it could find some circuitous route through air defences, fly past uh, anti-ballistic missile systems, fly past anti-cruise missile systems. It could fly over all sorts of territory and then drop stuff on the target. That being said, US tried to develop this and had a lot of problems and decided it wasn't worth doing. So maybe the equations have changed in regards to uh, defensive systems, but um, yeah, I don't know what's gonna go on here. I don't know if this is just an indication that the program is having trouble and is gonna fail. Building a reactor that is that small, that compact, and able to also not melt itself while having the air run through, that's, that's quite a complicated system because the air itself adds heating and... Yeah, I'm hoping we'll find out more, but almost certainly we will not find out any more. One thing that was actually confirmed was the Comprehensive uh, Test Ban Treaty Organization. They did detect an explosion. They have like sound sensors all around the world to detect and triangulate explosions. They did see something or hear something. So yeah, explosion confirmed, radiation confirmed. We don't know what kind of radiation. Uh, it hasn't reached Europe yet. So it's possible that the winds will carry over into European airspace. And then when they change the filters out, we might get a clue as to the isotopes released. And then you might actually see that it's possibly coolant. You might see that it's water. It, you might see that it's something, fission products. We don't know, waiting for more information. And with that, I'm off to work. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.